you, son, will give you the first question. How do I create a simulation heat flow in Mathematica? Okay, I will show you how to do that. So, well, I just took the uh, typical, very simple heat equation. It's just an example, but you can do more sophisticated thing with the, uh, your own equation. So, first of all, you want to start with the, our, you know, the uh, differential equations over. So, we have a D solve and we have an ND solve. And the difference is ND solve is a numerical differential equation solve. Usually faster, if you don't need a really accurate or, you know, symbolic answer, and this will be kind of a you know, good choice for animation and these you know, other tasks. So in this case, it's a heat equation, you know, it's the typical of the heat equation. You can see that, you know, it's, we have a, a function, you know, over time and x and y. I, I used a two-dimensional one. And I will make it a little bit more readable. I used a key command control shift to n, which turned everything into the standard form, which actually in return look like what you might see in, you know, text, for instance. Initial condition, everything is zero. The boundary condition in two sides, it's just fake examples. So I use the sine t. Let's say that just you know fluctuating temperature outside. The other world, let's say you know temperature is zero, and our u is our function. The time is between zero to ten, and the area of our you know the uh, computation is x and y between zero to five. And let's quickly solve it. And this is a typical form that you are getting from the uh, ND solve. And how you use it is, there's a couple of different ways. It's actually people's preference. But one of the way a lot of mathematical users do this is like this. So let me assign that. I already assigned the solution as a solve. And I do this. So the, uh, the idea here is this slash dot means replacing. So essentially what's happening is, you know, it replaces u with this interpolating function. Then it feeds it with the x, y, g. You know, value. So let's see how it looks like. And of course, now we have a three terms, x, y, and t, right? And when you want to do the animation, the t is the value you want to move. So you know, let's fix one t, let's say five in the middle. And x and y varies. Of course, I have to do uh, you know, replacing. Usually, I forget that quite often. And let's <coughs> do this. And Voila. You see the uh, so you know the temperature higher in the the two walls and you know it propagates in the middle. Now, very neatly, we can just change that time using our slider. So you know, I will point out there's a couple of problems with uh, this approach. So, okay, now our t is can be varying by this very simple command called manipulate. What it essentially says is I want to vary the value t between zero to ten. And uh, okay, you can easily animate. So you see the propagation. Okay, I will I'll point out a couple of things. Uh, it, once, if you see the uh, g axis here, which is which represent temperature, the problem here is it changes. So in Mathematica, the way of plotting thing is you know you have a tight. The, it, it always try to make a very tight plot range. So if your function varies from let's say minus one to one, it doesn't go that far. It just uh, clipped that area. So in this case, animation case, it's bad because you, it's kind of you know, you know, fluctuating. So I want to fix the plot range, let's say plot range between, and I know that my temperature was sine function, so probably minus one to one is enough. Now I just fix the, you know, the uh, G range. See, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't show the fluctuation. Now I will make it a little bit more interesting by adding the color function. And well, obviously it's a temperature, so good choices. I mean, by the way, we have a, a set of the color functions, color schemes that you can use in scientific visualization. And we have a lot of different things. And one of the good thing here is the, uh, let's try to, you know, thermometer or temperature map. It would be also good. I will choose the uh, temperature map. Okay, so it worked. And you can see higher temperature. Now, here's another slight problem because now the color function scales itself, meaning if you have a plot ranging from minus one to one or another plot ranging from minus to two, it always scales itself in such a way that the bottom color, the bottom value, the minimum value is always the uh, last color, and the top value, you know, the maximum value is always top color, color in the gradient bar, which is also, again, not good for our case because you want it to be, want it be very, you know, the, uh, flat across this cross section. So one way to avoid that is color function scaling function. So essentially what it does is, you know, instead of scaling your color according to your minimum and maximum, it just fixes it. Now the pro another problem, 
Now, the color function in all those a lot of maps only takes bit value between 0 to 1. So you have to manually, unfortunately, rescale that. And I will just show you code. I mean, to see the detail, I would, you know, I would refer people to take a look at the documentation, which has a good ex explanation how it works. But, you know, quick example in here, okay, let's say, uh, for non-users, it's a mathematical way to write down a quick function. It's called just pure function. And number three in this plus three the case means a g value. Now plus one divide by two. So essentially, I you know it's, I know the range is minus one to one. I just made range zero to one. So if you see this, now the neutral value zero, no temperature goes up red, goes down blue. Everything works fine. And let's set, change it to the density plot. And in density plot case, g value is always number one. So, and you can see more nice visualization. So, and you can animate it easily. So this is how you do it. And you know, I would, I suggest people, you know, who are interested in this type of scientific visualization, visit our demonstrations. Start with them. That be but. I could many, many of these equations solving and how visualize it, especially wavelet equation and heat equation, everything with all those sorts. So I think this is it. No, yeah, great. Yeah, if you want to check out some of those demonstrations, it's demonstrations.wolfram.com. You can find the link also at wolfram.com.